the Chase Thomas Podcast. For people who have nothing but time to kill. Zakai is a smart player. He's year three in the program. He didn't pick up that third or fourth out. And I think that to me, I mean, that was really hard to come back from. And I wonder why we're still this ardent in keeping guys on the bench when they pick up those two quick fouls. Yeah, I think that's a good point too. And, you know, just having Zakai on the floor is so key for Tennessee this season too, because of what Santi and Josiah have kind of become. And with what Dalton and Connect is, Santi and Josiah obviously have a little bit different roles, specifically Santi Agavescovi this year more so than past, as he's not really scored for this team anymore. Granted, he had zero points uh, against Kentucky. So you got to have Zakai on the floor to kind of offset that a little bit and have another score especially when someone else isn't super hot, such as a Ganey or Josiah is having a big game offensively, or maybe even a dude's not having one of his best games. I think Zakai is a must to have on the floor majority of the time. And it's kind of a trend we've seen with pulling guys with two fouls. I do agree with you that it was kind of a mistake. And, you know, just overall, my biggest takeaway from this game is that we hadn't seen Dalton connect get to 40 yet this year. He had obviously flirted with it being in the high thirties multiple times. He finally does yet. Tennessee still loses. So that's just a tad troubling when you have a guy go for 40 and you still lose the game heading into March ultimately, or heading into, you know, obviously the off season ultimately don't think this game should invoke a lot of worry into Tennessee fans, but that's kind of my takeaway 24 hours out. Ryan. I mean, with the 40 stuff to what Jack's talking about there, I mean, Barnes talked about this too, of like connects got a, I mean, he wasn't calling connect the ball hog or anything, but he was taught. He had a line about like connect passing more. What was the? Do you have the exact quote in in front of you of what he said? No, I don't because of the whole Wi Fi issue. I don't have many tabs pulled up. But it, it was it was essentially like you know he's got to do more to try to get other guys involved. And I, you know I kind mm. of felt like some people were maybe taking it out of context a little bit. Like he also mm. said, he also said those guys got to hit open shots and help them too. Yeah. Like he said it goes both ways, and he said. Uh, he mentioned a specific time in transition where he thought Josiah would have had an open dunk if he passed it to him and Dalton didn't see it. And he was kind of like, you know, he just kind of gets tunnel vision sometimes. And he's like, but that's what happens to elite scorers. So I don't think he was ripping them maybe the way some people took it. Um, and I think it does kind of go both ways. Dalton can be better at passing out of some double teams, passing in transition. He sucks so much attention uh, from defenses when he gets in transition. But it's that's easier said than done for a dude that in all those instances, he had a three over double team yesterday. He scores a ton in transition, even though uh, all that stuff. So the one thing I'll say on Zakai, the the guy foul trouble, you're right. I mean, that you were on it at the time. And I think I said to, I didn't like it. I don't know, you know, how much it was going to end up killing Tennessee. And you could tell it ended up hurting Tennessee because just how good Kentucky played in the second half and Tennessee wasn't, even though they got the lead to four or got the deficit to four, they weren't able to overcome it. The one thing I will say, I mean, you talked about it being so adamant, like it's still something he does. And last night I thought it was a bad decision that he did it. But two two games ago, we played Dalton Connect six, seven minutes in the, second, in the first half with two fouls. So it's not like he's been quite as set in stone. But Zakai, Dalton, those two, I think you got to play with two fouls. Jonas, I get because Jonas, you know, what he gives you defensively down low. Um, but Tobey, too, it's like, He'll be walking most of these games going to play five minutes in the second half. Who cares if yeah. he has three fouls to start it? Um, so, and I do, part of me wonders, you know, they put Fred DeLeon in and Rick talking about learning to maybe get his feet wet. Just to, maybe they were, you know, trying to find something in a game that they didn't need to win the SEC. I don't know. Maybe that's me just excuse making for him. But I definitely think to your point that taking Zakai out hurt them, especially, I mean, 14 8, no turnovers in the second half. He was fantastic in the final 20 minutes. And that's my biggest thing is like, it depends on like how you look at it. Cause Cal Perry was talking about it. Like Tennessee already had it wrapped up and this, that, and the other, but I still took it as like, I, I just, I don't understand, I guess how Tennessee was supposed to view this because obviously I, I think any Tennessee fan would have taken three and one over this four game stretch here to close things out beforehand. Definitely. It stinks that it was a loss that ended up uh, being the case here for this four game stretch here against four consecutive top ranked teams. Uh, but Tennessee and I said before the week, I, the most thing that what I was so nervous about with Kentucky was that like, I just think sweeping Alabama and Kentucky in the same season is just tough. I don't care how good of a season you're doing you're having. That's just really, really hard to pull off um, with what Alabama and Kentucky are talent wise year over year and offensively year over year in this conference. But I just I don't 
the there's a, the reason there's a Kai thing, I guess, kind of raised an eyebrow so much for me was that like you're playing still for a one seed. Like you, I understand that you've locked up the regular season here in the SEC, but like you got a you got a nice little favor from USC uh, later on in the evening, which should help things going into conference tournament week next week. But like you're playing for a one seed, and I dropped in the chat we were talking over the weekend where I'm like. The difference between winning a title as a one seed versus the history of winning a title as a one seed versus a two seed is monumental in the tournament. Like we're looking at 63% are one seeds over the last uh, 34 times. Like this is huge. Like the difference. So the margin of error, I guess, because this is such a good Tennessee team and this is an all time great Tennessee team. Barnes may never have a Tennessee team this talented all across the board with a superstar player like Dalton Connect ever again. Like you have to just kind of for me, I was just like, you have to understand the moment. And I understand the result. You have to be like, look, we ha- we cannot lose. I understand it's crazy town that we're in this spot anyway. And like, what an awesome run if we end up going 4-0 here um, with this kind of schedule. But like every, it just mattered so much to get the one seed. And I think that will be so critical for where what Tennessee ultimately does come March is when they're a one seed or two seed just because that for whatever reason, the disparity between the two is so large in the tournament that you just got to lock that down. So for me, I would have just been like, I'm riding with Sakai and Dalton no matter what, even if they're in some early foul trouble, whatever. You just have to go down. With, you just you can't do it. I just I did. I, I just very much disagree with that, with what happened there. And I wonder if Barnes could if he was offered to do it, would that be something he would change? It's like I would probably put Sakai back in there pretty quickly and if I knew we were going to struggle as much as we did until those final few minutes of the first half, um, if you could get a redo there, I don't know. We'll never know. Yeah. I mean, that's a good question. I don't, I don't, to your point, I don't know what he would have done. I mean, I definitely think you would think so. And like, that's the thing. This isn't even Zakai of last year who found himself in mm. foul trouble a lot. Like how many games has Zakai been in foul trouble this year? And you said it earlier, yeah. you didn't take up an f- entire foul in the second half. Like, no one on this team has more trust, has more of Rick Barnes' trust than Zakai. Um, and again, yeah, maybe it was tinkering, but I wouldn't, th- it didn't feel that way to me, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was something they th- it threw, threw Freddie out there for a minute um, where I would think, you know, if given a do over, maybe he would do that. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think it's something he would probably do over. And, you know, you talk about the loss too. Uh, you- mentioned USC did Tennessee a huge favor by beating Arizona, you know, and Lenardi still has Tennessee as a one seed last time mm-hmm. I checked. Um, yeah. So, Tom does too. Yeah. And Tennessee got pretty fortunate with, with mm-hmm. the USC thing. No one was expecting that to happen, but you know, now that everything's all said and done and you were entering the postseason, I think you can just kind of sit back and look at, yeah, maybe it changed a little bit and Tennessee probably would have cemented themselves as a one seed had they beat Kentucky, but they're still in control of having a one seed. And yeah. I think that's, you know, good. So Kentucky loss is not detrimental in any way. No, it just made you more nervous. I mean, we were talking about like, it's just, I, it's just because the stakes are so high, you know, like it's just, everything is every, like we're just in the big game here because this team can win a championship. This team is talented enough and deep enough to be able to win it all in March. And I, I think this is the first time we've gone in uh, with that kind of good. Nicely done, nephew. The Chase Thomas podcast. <laughs> Hell yeah.